Capitolum vicesimum sextum, Daedalus et Icarus, Lexio tertia, versus octagesimus tertius, usque adversum centesimum quadragesimum quintum. Hic verba locutus, Daedalus cum filio, sursum e labirinto e volavit, Neque quisquam fuga meorum anim advertet, nisi aliqui pastor, qui forte suspiciens, eos tamquam manias aves volantes videt, ac deos esse arbitratus est. Having spoken these words, Daedalus with his son flew up out of the labyrinth, and no one noticed their escape, except some shepherd, who, by chance looking up, saw them just like giant flying birds, and thought that they were gods. Mox pater et filius cretam reliquerunt, neque vero recta via, afenas in patriam suam volaverunt, sed nova libertate delectati, in manium orbem, supra mare egeum volare ceperunt. Soon father and son left Crete behind, but they did not fly straight to Athens, their fatherland, but, delighted by their new freedom, they began to fly in a great circle above the Aegean Sea. Icarus de speciens multitudinem insularum miratus est. O, oh, quod parve insulae in mari ingenti sunt? Icarus, looking down at the multitude of islands, marveled. Oh, how many small islands there are in the huge sea. Daedalus vero, ille insule inquit, haud parve sunt, quam quam parve esse videndur. But Daedalus said, those islands are not at all small, although they seem small. Certe melos insula, que infra nos est, non tam parva est quam tibi videtur. To be sure, melos island, which is below us, is not so small as it appears to you. Icarus, sed illa insula, que nobis a sinistra est, multo maior esse mihi videtur. Que est illa insula? But that island, which is at our left, seems to me to be much bigger. Which island is that? Peleponesus est, Grecie pars, nec vero insula est, sed peninsula. Nam Peleponesus terra angusta, Que isthmus vocator, cum reliqua Grecia coniungitur. It is the Peloponnesus, a part of Greece, but it is not an island, but a peninsula. For the Peloponnesus is joined with the rest of Greece by a narrow piece of land, which is called the Isthmus. Prope isthmum. Sita est Corinthus, urbs pulcherima, nec procul absunt Athene, patria nostra. Near the isthmus is located Corinth, an extremely beautiful city, and not far away is Athens, our homeland. Si alcius volabimus non solum Greciam, Sit pene totum orbem terrarum spectabimus, in quid puer temerarius, 
atque etiam altius se levavit. If we will fly higher, we will see not only Greece, but nearly the whole world, the whole circle of lands, says the rash boy, and he lifted himself even higher. Ilink non solum manias Europe et Asiae partes, de specie bat mirans, verum etiam oram Africae proculcenebat, de inde supra se solem in celo sereno lucentem suspexit. From there, Marveling, he was looking down on great parts of Europe and Asia. Excuse me. Not only was he looking down on great parts of Europe and Asia, but also he was seeing far off the coast of Africa. Then he looked up at the sun above himself, shining in the clear sky. Stat impuer cupido solem propius aspiciendi, quam quam pater eum monuerat, in sumum celum ascendit. Immediately the boy, desirous of looking at the sun more closely, although his father had warned him, went up into the highest part of the sky. Hic Quintus, qui exitum fabulae studiose expectat, interrogat, quid tum accidet. At this point, Quintus, who awaits the outcome of the story, eagerly asks, What happened then? Tum factum est id, quod necesse erat accidere. Then that happened which had to happen. Ignis solis propinqui ceram, qua pene iuncte et fixe erant, molivet et penas iusit. The fire of the nearby sun softened the wax by which the wings had been joined and attached and excuse me, by which the feathers had been joined and attached, and it burned the feathers. Puer teritus, lacertos nudos quatiens, in mare cecidet, ac mersus est, neque pater ei auxilium fere potuit. The terrified boy, shaking his bare upper arms, fell into the sea and was drowned. And his father could not help him. Ea maris ejei pars, in qua Icarus mersus est, a nomine eus mare Icarium appellator, that part of the Aegean Sea in which Icarus was sunk went down, is called the Icarian Sea from his name. Item insula propinqua, in cuius litore corpus pueri in ventum est, etiam nunc Icaria vocator. Likewise, the nearby island, on whose shore the body of the boy was found, even now is called Icaria. Ecce, omnem fabulam habes, de puero temerario, qui libertatem querens, mortem in venet. Here you go. You have the whole story about the rash boy who, seeking freedom, found death. Iam tempus dormiendi est. Now it is time to sleep. 
non nefessus es longas fabulas audiendo? Are you not tired from hearing long stories? Quintus caput quatit et non sum fessus, nec illa fabula longa esse mihi videtur. Quintus shakes his head. And I am not tired. And that story does not seem to me to be long. Ex omnibus fabulis, hec de casu icari, me maxime delectat, et siam magis quam illa de filio solis, qui curum patris regere conatus, etem de sumo celo cecidet, cor ab orbe solis stulte aberaverat, semper valde delector tales fabulas audiendo. Of all the stories, this about the fall of Icarus, pleases me the most, even more than that story about the son of the sun, who, having tried to steer the chariot of his father, likewise fell from the highest part of the sky, because foolishly he had wandered from the circle of the sun. I am always very much pleased by hearing in hearing such stories. Ego non minus delector, narrando illas fabulas, non modo quod ipse per se polcherime esse mihi videntur, sed etiam quia exitus fabularum homines temerarios optime monent. I am not less pleased in telling such stories, not only because they are themselves, they, they themselves seem to me to be very beautiful in and of themselves, but also because the outcomes of the stories warn in the best way rash people. Tales enem est hominum natura, et quidem maxime puerorum. For such is the nature of human beings, and indeed especially of boys or children. Non solum delectandi causa, verum etiam monendi causa, narratur fabula de filio daedali, nam quod ili puero accidet, Idem omni puero accidere poterit, nisi patri suo paret. Not only for the sake of giving pleasure, but also for the sake of warning, is the story about the son of Daedalus told. For that which happened to that boy, the same thing will be able to happen to every boy, unless he obeys his father. Noli Icarum imitari, mi quinte, do not imitate Icarus, my quintus, semper cautus esto, always be cautious, verum haud necesse est, te a me moneri, post id quodheri tibi accidet, but it is not at all necessary that you are warned by me after that which happened to you yesterday. Certe ille casus tuus melius te monet quam ulla fabula. Certainly that fall of yours warns you better than any story. Is verbis puero monito sira tandem narandi finem facet. After the boy has been admonished by these words, Sira finally makes an end of storytelling. That is, she finishes storytelling. Neque quintus eam abeuntem revocat, sed in lector ecumbet, oculosque claudit. And Quintus does not call her back, 
although she goes away as she goes away, but lies back in his bed and closes his eyes. Mox puer insomnis sebi videtur alis ornatus transmontes et flumina volare. Soon the boy seems to himself, appears to himself in his dreams, decorated, decked out with wings, to be flying across mountains and rivers. <laughs>